From budding stars to a villainous owner, Jason Priestley's latest work is on just that, and he's ready to talk about it. He's sitting down with Chris Simpson. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Jason, I know you're used to being on movie sets and television sets, but welcome to our hockey set. Welcome to Hockey Central. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's kind of cool to be here. Like what we've done with the place. I've only ever seen this place on TV. You are here today wearing a director's hat, yeah. and we're here to talk about the documentary Offside, the Harold Ballard story. You directed it, you narrate it, uh, with executive producer Mike Geddes, a good friend of both of ours. We're going to talk about it, but I want to start by giving people a bit of a sneak peek of the documentary. Let's take a look. He had just scored 50 for the third time, and in one of the papers, it said, Live scores 50 for the third year, or something like that, and his contract was up. And underneath it, it said, looks like Ballard's going to have to loosen his purse strings. He turned to Ricky, who was right here. My head, my chin was basically on Rick's shoulder. So, you know, Harold was right here. And he says, if you think you're getting another effing dime out of me, you're crazy. And sits down. <laughs> and he was dead serious. All he cared about was having people in the seats and making money. And I, I don't think he cared if we won a Stanley Cup or not. I, I honestly don't. Ah, that has to drive a stake <laughs> to the heart of every Leaf fan out there who are wondering what could have been during the 70s and the 80s when Harold Ballard was at the helm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, especially the 80s. You know, yeah. the, the 80s teams were, I mean, uh, 10 losing seasons in a row, right? Um, it's, it, it's uh, yeah, it's tough. It's, it, it's tough to watch because they were, they, those, those were, those were very lean, lean years, and especially you know a guy like a guy like Rick Vive who came here um, to that franchise at that time when he, and and he was still able to manage three fifty goal seasons in a row yeah. with with not the greatest team around him. Like imagine what he would have been able to accomplish. Uh, on another team with with you know with other what what would he have been able to do in Edmonton yeah on that team exactly right like how could he have lit it up on that team what it would have been crazy have been. And, and and poor Gary Lehman like when he, when he talks when when he talked about that he talked about being a young player in the NHL and how you how you needed to feel um, the support of your team and you needed to feel safe in your job and secure in your job and. Uh, and and he didn't feel any of those things. And you know, as as a young player in the NHL, when you when you 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 dream of playing in the NHL your whole life, and then all of a sudden you get that shot, and and you're there, and now you you expect it to be one thing, and it's something entirely different. Yeah. He said it was, it was you know it was it was heartbreaking for him. And, and you you know when you watch him speak about it, you can you can see it. You know, yeah. like so many of these guys. When I spoke to them for this documentary, they were so forthcoming and they were so honest about their recollections um, and and about the painful experiences that they had. It was really refreshing because so many of the players nowadays speak in you know they speak in little sound they won't bites say a and thing. They, no yeah. they they really they really speak in 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 these perfectly crafted little sound bites and so to have to see these guys be so honest and yeah. forthcoming it was really refreshing i was surprised at how open and honest they were and for me it was a walk down memory lane i mean i remember them the circus that it was with harold at the helm i think from the interviews uh, you know so many names were used to describe him cantankerous um a con artist um an enigma nice. for you Having done all the interviews, what, what one word would you use to describe Harold Ballard? Well, enigma is the one is the one word I think that that really uh, resonates for me. I mean, I, you know, I, I I asked everyone the same question: give me one word to describe Harold Ballard. Everybody gave me a different answer. That's why I, I felt it was so important for me as a filmmaker to lay out all the evidence that mm -hmm. I that I got from everybody as to who he was why he did the things that he did, and and what do you think the motivation was Behind for him was. to do those things? What was, was there something wrong with him? Was he, was he just, was he, was he crazy? Like, what, what was it? And, and I got different answers from everybody. So I, I felt as a responsible filmmaker, I just had to lay all the evidence out for everybody and let the audience decide where, what they thought were, yeah. were the reasons. People can decide for themselves. Sunday night, I know, on CBC, Offside, the Harold Ballard story. Jason, it's been great talking hockey with you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Lovely to see you, as always. Carolyn? <laughs>